Photography is an art, and it's an art based on what we see. If you're a landscape photographer, you will go somewhere and see the photo in your eyes before you take it with your camera. If you're a sports photographer, you need to see the right moment in your eyes and then capture that action. As a portrait photographer, I look to my models until I see the right expression, and then capture that moment. So when we want to illuminate our subjects, why do we have to use flash technology that doesn't allow us to see for real what's happening? The reason is simple, technology hasn't been advanced enough to give us a good continuous light to work with. As you all know, LEDs are changing the world in many different fields, and for photographers as well. In the last couple of years, we've seen the power of LEDs improving to the point where it is a real alternative for some photography. But photographers are not only about power. The last problem to be solved was the light quality. Falcon Eyes brings you a new and incredible range of LED lights designed specifically for photography and video. That new line of powerful, versatile and portable lights will take your photography to the next level. Today I'm going to show you how we use those lights for one of the most demanding styles of photography, a beauty shooting. Right, so let me show you the LED tools I'm going to use today. Uh, I'm going to use two different kinds of LEDs from Falcon Eyes. The first one is the Rolex series. Uh, this is a more traditionally looking LED panel, but the special characteristic is that it's flexible. So I can fold it and shape it on the way I want. So that's a very modular system because thanks to this Velcro, I can connect multiple units and create different shapes. Uh, like for example, if it was a strip box or anything like that. At the same time, uh, Falcon Eyes sells some accessories like diffusers or softboxes, which can shape the light. Because as I said before, it's not only about the power, but about the quality of the light. This is gonna be my general light to go. I'm gonna use it for almost every, everything, but I have a different kind of light that I use for main light. The second LED I'm going to use is the Soffit light from Falcon Eyes. This is a completely new technology. It's revolutionary. It's definitely my favorite, which allows us to have the softbox effect while we're using an LED light. So traditionally, the LED panels, they are quite harsh. They create quite harsh shadows and quite contrasty. But in photography, most of the time for portraits, we use soft lights. And in LEDs, you used to put diffusion panels and it was not the best solutions. But now with the Sofit from Falcon Eyes, we have everything in one and in a very thin line. This basically creates a very soft light, very even, without any differences from one edge to another and creates soft shadows like a softbox. It's a really good tool and it's the perfect tool for a key light. That's really, really designed with photographers in mind. They make different sizes and obviously the power depends on the size according to the amount of LED technology it has inside. But the 68 is definitely my favorite and it's gonna be my to-go key light for photography. As I told you before, we're gonna do a beauty shot today and for that I have Melissa today is gonna help me. We're almost ready to shoot, but before I want to eliminate some of the myths from the LED light to, that people usually have. The first of all is the power. People think that LEDs are not very powerful. At the moment my camera settings are 2.8 at ISO 200 at 100 of a second. But my main LED, the one that is lining Melissa at the moment, is at 60% of its power. Let me lift it up and I will show you the effect on it. So as I said, this is 60% of power and I'm going to raise up the power up to 100% and that would be the maximum power we will have here. For my shooting, actually, I'm going to work on about 60-65% because I want a bit more of a low-key, more contrasty from that first light and I will fit up with all the LEDs to make it look bright like a beauty has to be. The second major concern for photographers and videographers about LED light is usually the color rendering index. That's basically how the colors are going to look under that light. And Falcon Eyes did a great job and we have a CRI of 95%. As you can see now, Melissa is showing you a color card and you can see how accurate the colors are. It's really good and it works very well. So as you can see, technically, these LEDs are really good. They are uh, very powerful and at the same time, they are very accurate on the color. That's the two most important things to be able to work with them. But to be creative with them, we need to be able to create different kind of light and light setups. So my main tool in photography with flash is usually a softbox. And with LEDs, we don't usually have softboxes. The new soffit light is really amazing because it creates the same effect. What I'm looking here is for a light that is contrasty, but at the same time, it has kind of a soft shadow where the transitions are not so aggressive. If I compare this light with a normal LED panel, you will see that it's completely different how it lights my model. It doesn't 
changes much the direction of the light, but it changes the way the shadows behave. The softest light are so soft and so beautiful that even if you can see this is a live view from the camera, it looks already like a photo. Right, so now that we cleared up the technicals of the LEDs and we see that they are very good for photography, I will start creating my photo. I'm going to make a beauty photo as I told you with Melissa and I'm going to use the five light setup. I will use my main key light, a Sofit 68, it's going to be my soft beautiful light from the top in a butterfly position. I will fill it up with a clamshell from the bottom creating a nice light coming down to the top that will fill the shadows from the top light and that will make her raise up and be looking much more beauty and healthy and then I will combine that with another few rim lights from the sides to profile her body from the background and last but not least I will use a headlight from the very top coming from the from the zenithal position so I will keep showing you the results here I will start setting up my lights and show you here how they look let's start with the first light the key light Right, so I have positioned my first light, the Sofit 68 from Falcon Eyes, in a butterfly or you can call it also Paramount uh, light setup, which would be like on top of her, quite pointed down, and this is how it looks straight away. You can recognize the Paramount from the shadow under her nose, but as you see, it's a very beautiful light, but it's a little bit too strong. Uh, the highlights on the nose and the cheeks are a bit too powerful, so I'm gonna drop the power of that light. Right now the light is at 60% uh, power, so I'm gonna drop it to 40% and let's see how that looks, 41, 40. You can move it in 1% ranges. So we take another photo now. Yeah, definitely that's much better. Now there is no such a blown highlights on the face and we have the contrast and everything looks beautiful. This is a really moody portrait and it's really beautiful as itself, but this will be more of a creative moody portrait and it's not so much of a beauty. So for a beauty we need to bring more light and make her look very healthy and very happy. So what we will do is we will start adding the bottom light, the fill light from the bottom, that is going to be what we call a clamshell effect, because we will have a light from the top, a light from the bottom, and that both lights will go towards our model. So let's put the bottom one. For the clamshell effect, I choose to use one of the Rolex series from Falcon Eyes. It's one of the flexible LED panels, but comes with a bracket that allows me to put it in any position I want. So I'm just gonna try to position it like that, pointing up. I'm gonna get it quite close to her. And I'm gonna just make it a little bit more tilted, so I get more fill from the bottom and not so much from the front. So you get close to her. And then this one is plugged into the electricity, but all of this uh, range of LEDs from Falcon Eyes can be working with batteries. That will make it much more flexible to take it anywhere with you without having to worry too much. So this is the light we get from that. It's really bright, but luckily I can dim it down. This will be the minimal power and this will be full power. So it's quite powerful. In this case, we just want to fill. So I'm going to use not so much Right, so here on screen you have the, the photo we had before with the, only the butterfly light and this is how it looks when we add that fill from the bottom. So you can see that it's starting to look much more like a beauty. She's looking much more bright and much more uh, healthy. Uh, the smile helps a lot as well. But I'm gonna drop a little bit the power on the bottom light. It's still too powerful for what I'm looking for. So let's go down a little bit. There you go just a little bit it's just a small differences let's see how this looks now yeah beautiful that small difference makes a big difference to me perfect so now we have the top light and the bottom light basically the most of the mood of our of our shooting now is already created but let's add some more lights that will create separation and volume on her so i'm going to start by adding two rim lights on the sides for the rim lights i'm going to use two more of the rolex uh, lights. In this case I'm going to use the 18s and I'm just going to position them from behind Melissa to the front. That way I can give a three-dimensional look to her figure and separate her from the background. So the first one is going to be this one and the second one is going to be on the same place but on the opposite side.
Once again, we have the photo on the screen that we had before without the rim lights. And now I have the rim lights at full power just to show you how much power you can get out of this. And this is the photo we will get with the rim lights with so much power. As you can see, everything is blown out around here. I have the left one actually on screen. I will move it out of the screen in a second. But as you can see, everything is blown out and even the front of her, it's contaminated by that field light. So I have to be very careful on the power I use for this kind of thing so it doesn't contaminate my initial intentions of the photo. So I'm gonna drop the power, move them a little bit and try to get them on the right position. After playing a bit with them, in this case, I want the very strong rim lights to separate her from the background. And as you can see, we have kind of some hard shadows coming in from these rim lights on, on the shadows on her cheek from her hair. But at the same time, we get some shininess on the hair, so it's really beautiful. In this case, I'm gonna choose for this a bit stronger rim light, but obviously that's down to the taste of each photographer. The great thing about the LEDs is that what we see is what we get. So actually we can do it in a very visual way, as I was saying at the very beginning of this video. We don't have to keep testing and readjusting without knowing where it will be. Every time I change something, I'm seeing it with my eyes and I'm seeing the result before taking the photo. So I can do a very visual approach to it. Right, so right now the photo is really 3D. Uh, as you see, she has a lot of three-dimensionality, a lot of volume. She's popping out from the background and she's looking really healthy and beautiful on the front. I'm just gonna add one last light on the very top on her head to give a lot of light on the top of her hair. And that light, I really like it. It makes a big difference for me and I use it mostly in almost every single portrait. For this, I'm gonna use one more of the Rolex, uh, one of the small ones, because it just has to light the top of her hair. It's not gonna be very far away from her head, just out of the frame, and it's gonna make a big difference. You will see it in a second. Some of the great things of working with LEDs is that we don't need these massive boom stands. I have them because I have in my studio plenty of uh, different tools, but honestly, the panel is so light and so little that it doesn't need almost anything to, to put it up there. It doesn't need such a, a big stuff. And second, I can have the controller down here, so I don't have to be trying to adjust my power on top of my model, but I can actually work it from down here without any problems. I can turn it on, and then from there, I can regulate the power from here and see the effect on her hair. So I'm gonna let it in a kind of a medium setting. This is, as I said, it's just a hair light that will fill her head and her shoulders, basically. And I will put it a little bit from the back, coming towards the front. That way we will get like a beautiful effect on her hair. There you go. Okay, Melissa, let's look at camera and smile. You go, you see the difference on the top of her hair? That's a bit too strong, so I'm gonna dim it down and drop the power and see how it looks once we have it a bit lower. There we go. One more time, Melissa. Beautiful smile. So take a look, this is with the hair light on the top and this was without. You can see on the top part, let's see a 100% look, but you can see how up here the hair looks kind of dead and when we go to the last one, uh, the hair looks much more beautiful up there, much more bright and shiny, which makes the picture better. So this would be the light setup I would use today. Uh, from here, I will start working with hair. Let's try uh, another shot. Like, can you look straight in the camera and don't tilt your head and then give me a big smile? Yeah, beautiful. Let's see how this looks. Because when she's tilting her head, the rim lights may be affecting. As you can see in this photo, her eyes are a little bit dark. And that's because when I started in a lower key with one light, I did not appreciate that darkness, but now related to the rest of the lights, I think the face needs a little bit more light. So what I'm gonna do is just put a bit more power on my soft, it's soft light, and then from there we will get the perfect balance. That's what I usually call the tweaking, and it's at the end of the setup, when you have all the lights on, then you start regulating each of them to get the perfect uh, light that you want. So let's regulate a little bit this power that we dropped at the beginning. We will go to about 60% again. We are 40% here. And let's see how this looks now. If she has a little bit more light on her eyes. Yeah, that's better. That's much better. It looks even more beautiful.
So let's see what we got here, okay? We have a beauty shot where we are using five lights and we started with a butterfly setup with the Sophie 68 from Falcon Eyes, which is a soft, beautiful LED light that is super diffused and it gives like a really nice light on my model. Then we filled it up with a bottom light creating a clamshell effect. That one we used a smaller panel, a 12 from the Rolex series of Falcon Eyes. And then to create three-dimensionality on the model, we added two lights from the back, uh, what we know as rim lights. And positioning them in the right position made our model pop from the background, uh, apported three-dimensionality, and filled up a little highlight on her shoulders to focus the attention towards her face. So the light is driving us towards the face. Uh, last but not least, we added a hair light on the very top, a zenithal light coming from the top that it's lighting a little bit the top of her hair to create highlights and shadows on her hair as well and that makes it to have more volume and to look more pretty. So now we have the typical beauty shot that we would use for a cosmetic advertising or with any other kind of photo where we want the model to look healthy, beautiful and empowered. I'm gonna stay now with Melissa taking some photos. I will show you the result and if you guys have any questions please leave a comment and I will answer as soon as possible. Perfect. One of the things I like most of working with LEDs is that there is no refresh between the flash pops. In this case, we can work continuously. So I can really get my model to get on the acting and get like boom, 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 photo, photo, photo. And that gets a flow that usually brings the best results. Okay, Melissa, let's go for it. Good. 